Hello students, and welcome back to another AP Calculus lesson with Mr. Hernandez. In this lesson, uh, in this section, we're gonna be looking at limits of trigonometric functions. In this first video of this uh, three-part series, we're gonna be looking at how can you rewrite some functions so that you can use those identities, use some factoring, and make those functions easier to work with so that you can actually find some values of those limits after rewriting the functions. So let's get into it. So we have done some direct substitution before, and uh, let's look at these two problems as we do some direct substitution. The limit as theta approaches two pi over three, sine of three theta over three times theta. Okay, that was a little bit of a mouthful, but we'll keep going. Uh, I'm gonna make my substitution, and I'm gonna get sine of three times two pi over three over three, times two pi over three. So those are going to divide out, and uh, those are going to divide out. So um, I'm gonna have sine of two pi over uh, two pi. All right, so think. let's think about, okay, what is um, two sine of two pi? So that's one rotation around the unit circle, and then the y value for sine is going to be zero, so I'm gonna end up with zero, over two pi, which equals zero. So direct substitution works. Let's look at the second problem, the limit of, as theta approaches pi of two times cosine squared of theta. All right, so uh, we'll make our direct substitution and we'll have two cosine squared of pi. All right, so now let's think, okay, what is cosine of pi? So cosine of pi is negative one, so I'm gonna have two times negative one squared. Negative one squared is positive one times two gets me two. So great, direct substitution seems to be working most of the time. Well, let's switch it up on you now. Here, we're going to consider this limit as theta approaches zero of one minus cosine theta on sine squared theta. Let's try this limit using direct substitution, okay. Let's see, I've got one minus cosine theta, so one minus cosine of zero over sine squared of zero. All right, so one minus cosine of zero. Cosine of zero, that value is one, so I end up in the numerator one minus one over sine squared of zero. So uh, sine squared of zero, well sine of zero is zero, zero squared comes out to be zero. 1 minus 1 is 0. So in my numerator and my denominator, I get 0 on 0, which is that indeterminate form. And what that always tells me is like, okay, I haven't done something wrong. I just have other strategies I need to bring into play here. So let's try rewriting our, our function using some identities. And in this case, an identity that you're going to want to know is your Pythagorean identity. All right, and what your Pythagorean identity is going to say is sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to one. All right, so uh, we have sine squared plus cosine squared, we get one for that. So why is that gonna be useful? Well, we're gonna make a substitution because if I subtract cosine squared on both sides, I get sine squared of theta equals one minus cosine squared theta. All right, well look at this. I can make a substitution right here in the denominator of my equation. And um, we're gonna start by making that substitution. So now I have the limit as theta approaches zero, and my numerator is gonna stay the same, one minus cosine theta over sine squared of theta, but we're gonna rewrite this as one minus cosine squared of theta. All right, so why do we do all of that? Well, what I see in my denominator is a difference of squares. So I'm gonna actually factor my denominator now. We're gonna have the limit as theta approaches zero, one minus cosine theta over, well, that's gonna be one plus cosine theta and one minus cosine theta. And what happens is in the numerator and denominator, I can actually divide those out. So we're gonna divide those out here. And let me rewrite this now. I have the limit as theta approaches zero of one over one plus cosine theta. 
So we got rid of sine, we got rid of one of the cosines, or actually got rid of two of the cosines that we ended up with. Now let's try some direct substitution again. Okay, after rewriting this, we'll, we'll try substituting in zero now. So we have one over one plus cosine of zero, and cosine of zero is one. All right, so that's gonna get me one over one plus one, which is one half. So the limit as theta approach zero of our function up here comes out to be one half. Now, it, we, we can't end up with an answer of zero over zero. So that's why rewriting with some of our trig identities, um, some quotient identities, your Pythagorean identities, things like that, can be really helpful when solving these limits. So now let's tackle these three problems and we'll do these three examples as we rewrite some of our identities. So the limit as theta approaches three pi over two with three tangent theta cosine theta. So I'm gonna rewrite this using a quotient identity. So I had three and tangent, the quotient identity for tangent is sine over cosine. So three times sine of theta over cosine theta times cosine theta. And what ends up happening here is that the cosines end up dividing out. So now let me rewrite this. The limit, the limit as theta approaches 3 pi over 2 of 3 sine theta. Well, now I can try direct substitution. So let's try this out. So 3 times sine of 3 pi over 2. And let's see, Sine of three pi over two comes out to be negative one. So I have three times negative one, which comes out to be negative three. So rewriting this made it actually much smaller, much faster to solve. Moving on to uh, question two, we're gonna try reciprocal identity. So the limit as theta approaches pi over two of secant theta, but secant we're going to write as 1 over cosine theta, that's the reciprocal, times cosine theta, still in the numerator, all over 4 theta. All right, so those are going to divide out. So let's write out what I have now. The limit as theta approaches pi over 2 of 1 over 4 theta. Now let's try direct substitution. All right, so I end up with one over four times pi over two. Four over two is gonna get me two, so I end up with an answer, a final answer of one over two pi. Moving on to our final question, question three. The limit as theta approaches pi, and um, there's, there's probably a couple things we can do here, but let's start writing this out using quotient identity. And we're gonna get the limit as theta approaches pi of cosine theta. And then tangent, we'll use that quotient identity that we used earlier. So sine theta over cosine theta over sine theta. Well, what I notice immediately is that these cosines divide out. All right, so now I have limit as theta approaches pi of sine theta over sine theta and anything divided by itself comes out to be one. So we can simplify this. So the limit as theta approaches pi of one. Well, we're, we have a limit of a constant. So that's a constant line equal to one. And as theta approaches pi from either direction, the y value is never gonna change. It's a single line. So it's a single horizontal line. And that value is going to come out to be one. So we have two more parts in this series. Our next part is going to look at some specific scenarios, some specific uh, limits for a couple of trig functions. We're going to understand those. And then our final part is going to be a lot of practice problems with finding the limit of trig functions. So stay tuned for those videos. Um, if you need any help, I'm Mr. Hernandez and I'm always here to help.